Ciao familia! <laughs> Welcome to another YouTube video and in this video we're going to be going through how to overcome plateaus and how to spice up your leg sessions because let me tell you something I've been training now for like six years five six years six years more like actually <laughs> um, and let me tell you something, progressive overload means that you can't ob obviously swap out your exercises every time you train. You have to be able to improve um, with an exercise. So you have to be repetitive with some exercises in order to get stronger and grow, right? But the only thing is that sometimes you can get a little bit bored of doing the same thing over and over again. And actually, let me tell you something. The other day, it literally happened last week. I went in the gym and as I was getting on, cracking on with my normal work, I was like, oh my God, I can't be bothered doing the same thing again. I was literally like, oh, again, let's start with squats, then let's do hip thrusts, then let's do RDLs. And I was like, oh God, I cannot be bothered. So in this video, I'm going to be highlighting or <laughs> I'm going to um, explain what you can do to still be able to progressive overload and make the most out of your gains for the bunda because that's what we want the way <laughs> whilst um, also spicing it up a bit and making sure that you keep the intensity high on your workouts as you progress with your lifts as well so make sure you <laughs> keep watching and as always for me yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe because you don't want to miss any useful content and any useful information I always make sure that I post content that can help um, people um, and can help you so make sure you subscribe so you never miss any useful things and also of course you'll have the option to start training with me one-to-one -one with the best <laughs> joking but yeah not joking really because yeah my clients results are insane so if you want to join the familia and start training with me one-to-one -one, where I'm literally there every single step of the way and I create a personalized plan just for you based on your needs link in the description below for online coaching anyway that being said let's get into the video now Let's say that squats are in your program. So obviously if you want to be able to improve um, all the time, you need to be able to perform them every week. So I start, especially if you're a beginner, for example, even someone that is not uh, completely comfortable with squatting. Because squats are a complex exercise. It requires a lot of range of motion and a lot of mobility of your joints, especially your hips and ankles. So as you work on your mobility, your squats will improve. But in order to improve, you need to repeat them every single week, don't you? But um, after you repeat them for a while, like I do, now I've been squatting for a couple of months. So I do squats twice a week. You can imagine it can get a bit repetitive sometimes. Although, yes, I'm progressing up with my weight. I'm getting stronger. So I've got the challenge of going heavier. But sometimes it feels like... I'm doing the same thing um, over and over again. So, first of all, as I mentioned already, one way to get it, well, obviously that's obvious, to spice up your workouts is just to go a little bit heavier. Um, so for example, with your squat, just make sure you build up your strength, you build up the weight over time. Um, and also, and that's one thing that I actually mentioned in one of my previous videos as well. Um, you can strive to go heavy on all your lifts. So you need to learn how to cycle your lifts, okay? What does it mean? So I've got three main compounds in my program. These are squats, um, RDLs, and hip thrusts. And only pick one exercise where I go at my heaviest. The other one will be moderate, and the other one will be light. My light one at the moment in this cycle that I'm doing, my light one is for RDLs, moderated squats and hip thrusts are my heaviest, okay? So 
When I do my squats, I make sure that yes, I pick a weight that is challenging enough for me, that range of motion allows me to go all the way down, but um, it's not too heavy. So I aim at least for eight to 10 reps with my squats, okay? And every six to eight weeks actually, and then after eight weeks, I will swap my focus. So I could do squats, um, I would do my heaviest, so I could do three to four reps max. Um, I'm getting stronger with those kind of lifts. And then for my hip thrust, I will just lower the weight and work more on range of motion and form. So swapping and periodization is something that will help you change up your training uh, from this perspective in terms of weight. But you can still get a little bit boring. Like I said, last week I had to do my squat and I was like, oh my God, I can't be bothered. So one good thing to do is to include spicy supersets, okay? So supersets, because you're doing a compound lift, like squats, squats, of course, as I said before, they're hard lifts. So obviously you can't do, for example, squats and supersetting with split squats. You won't be able to do it because they're two very hard exercises combined together, especially when you're supersetting, you're not having any rest in between. So you can pick things like banded exercises that are more isolation exercises. So for example, one of my favorite ones, I always do it is the diagonal walk aka monster walk so all you need is a thick resistance band make sure you get a heavy one because if you get like a flimsy one or one that is not too heavy you won't be able to feel this okay because you're adding no weight it's important that you choose a band that is heavy enough so what you want to do is add things like banded monster walk all you have to do is basically walk side by side like so make sure your knees are externally rotated like that okay so one side to the other and you want to do high volume for this so at least 30 reps okay so no rest you do your squats and then straight away into this now next thing to spice up your set so what you want to do again since we had a squat rack, we might just stay at the squat rack as well. Another great way to spice up your training and to make it a little bit more challenging is adding things like, as I mentioned already, isometric hold. What the hell is isometric training? <laughs> isometric training is basically when you lengthen your muscles. So your muscles are the most vulnerable, vulnerable position that lengthen to their, their stretched. So let's think about the squat, for example. When I get into a squat position, your glutes will be lengthened at the bottom of my squat, okay? So while I'm down in a descent position, what I want to do is just squeeze my glutes as hard as I can and, and hold there for about three to five seconds. So you wouldn't squeeze at the top like you're taught to be. That's not okay, by the way. Make sure you never squeeze at the top. So you squeeze it instead at the bottom of your movement. You would squeeze as hard as you can, the hell out of it, basically. And what you want to do just hold there three to five seconds and then go up of course you do that with the weight which will help you intensify your leg workout so i'm going to do a couple of reps with you just to demonstrate so get your weight on again make sure to externally rotate your legs out okay core braced one Two, three, four, five, up, and again. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm squeezing as much as possible, and believe me, this will tie you out. This will feel like hell. That's why you want to do less reps with this. If you're doing this long pauses at the bottom, your energy will you run out of energy much quicker. So, what you want to do about 10 reps instead of your normal 10 reps max I would say don't go over 10 so honestly it will be really really intense another great to intensify your workout or to overcome your plateaus is to include things like pulses pulses are a great way to kind of it's almost adding a superset in between so really nice and simple you want to get under the bar and do the same thing at the bottom you just want to come up a quarter of the way and then go back down again so one two three so you can do as many pulses as you like 
I wouldn't recommend going over three. You could do two, you can do three, depending on how much heavier you're going as well. These are three other ways. I'll show you the next one in a minute as well. So another great way to kind of get over your repetitive lifts is by including variations of exercises. So you don't want to do these all the time. So you don't want to do a different variation every single time you train. Of course, we need to aim at progressive overload. Um, so for example, I do train legs three times a week. So what is a great way to spice my spice it up a little bit just because I tend to do hip thrust slash cast glute bridges every single time I train rather than doing them three times a week I could do cast glute bridges the normal variation obviously for those people that don't know what cast glute bridges I'll show you in a minute but um, I could do twice um, cast glute bridges and then the other third workout I could do a variation of cast glute bridges so I could still do something that belongs to the family of hip thrusts if it makes sense but on my third leg session I could do a different variation so that is a great way to spice your training up a little bit and just switch it up when you get bored or when you reach plateau so for those people who don't know very quickly I just demonstrate what what a cast glute bridge is so it's basically like a hip thrust, but the difference is that with a hip thrust, you go all the way down, like so, okay? So you touch, you let your bum touch the floor, okay? But with a cast instead, you stop half the, half the way there, okay? This is more glute dominant. The cast glute bridge is a more, more glute dom dominant, while with hip thrust, you tend to recruit your legs as well. Now, so a great variation that I love to do is a single leg variation. And why single leg variations? Because single leg variations are actually, I just said variations actually four times in like in the space of 10 seconds. <laughs> um, because they're harder to perform. And also they help you isolate each cheek at a time, if it makes sense. So um, if you're someone that struggles with muscle imbalances or simply helps you recruit um, your muscles even better because you're just doing one side at a time okay so I'll just quickly show you what I love to do I love to do the B, the B stance variation so all you have to do with your foot you could decide and um, if you've never done before you don't really feel comfortable with the weight first of all you need to pick a lighter weight <laughs> obviously this is a demo weight so it's light anyway for me because I'm only demonstrating you and <laughs> um, this but for example, I normally do 220 kg with my normal hip thrust. With the B stance, I would do half the weight at least. But anyway, you can try different ways the first time and see what works for you. Obviously, remember, you need to go to be able to, be able to do the full range of motion of the exercise um, in order to tick it, if it makes sense. So all you have to want to do is just literally just lift one foot. So let me just face you. <laughs> so you've got your feet on the floor and lift one foot um, so that you basically focus all the weight of the exercise on this standing leg where the foot is completely planted on the floor. Um, if you struggle with this, you could also place um, a plate just under it to keep it elevated for you if you make sense, so it's just easier. Um, and then just perform the normal cast. So foot up or elevated with the plate go down and up down and up down and up actually you can also elevate the other one if you feel like it's comfortable for you okay and also other leg as well great variation also if you don't feel like doing a single leg variation if you don't like this particularly glute bridges from the floor for me yeah so let me just get down <laughs> so nice and easy okay just starting off with the floor remember to tuck your pelvis in when you do this exercise the glute bridge variation you want to tuck your pelvis in um, rather than sticking your bum out and make sure you don't overextend you don't need to go all the way up to, this, to the extreme of arching your lower back because you'll start feeling it in your lower back, okay? So, another great variation, this. 
that you could incorporate to your leg training and switch it up from your hip thrust as well. Glute bridges like that are also they tend to be more glute dominant as well. So if you tend to, if you're an individual that feels hip thrust a lot in their legs, even after switching up their feet positioning and everything, their foot positioning and everything, um, I recommend trying them directly from the floor. And this also leads us to including unilateral movements, okay? Unilateral movements, also single leg movements, like I said before and I mentioned before. Um, they're harder to perform, also great to isolate um, each side at a time, great to fix muscle imbalances. So if, for example, if you're someone that has one side stronger than the other, one side smaller than the other, you want to aim at doing a couple of more reps, maybe two to three reps, more on the weaker smaller side okay so things like for example as i mentioned before my main compounds are um, rdls and um, hip thrusts and squats right so for my rdl again on one of those days that i do them i could do single leg or b stand rdls which is exactly the same of what we did with the squat so again you basically want to take off the weight on one leg so let me just show you the foot positioning as well so that you can see what I mean. Just need to get really far. But yeah, basically lifting one foot, you're going almost on your tiptoe with one foot. And it means that you can put the weight on here. The weight needs to be on the stable foot that is planted on the floor. So as I would do this RDL variation, exactly the same thing. Again, you can decide to even elevate your foot with a plate on there if you feel uncomfortable keeping it lifted up. And exactly the same movement, focusing on the most stable leg, okay? And working one leg at a time. Anyway, for me, I hope this helped you. And trust me, if you try these little tips and tricks, you'll definitely overcome your plateaus and obviously <laughs> intensify your workout as a whole. I hope this video helped you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if it did. And I will see you next time with another video.